Good morning and welcome to you all to the uh, the church behind the chippy, Grove Hill Church, um, the uh, Church of the Resurrection, whatever you want to call it, and I, I am going to wish you all a happy new year. Absolutely. Well, you might be thinking, what on earth is he talking about? Well, what's new? But um, it is the church's new year. We've been through the full extent of the church's calendar uh, from uh, last Christmas, last Advent, last Christmas, um, last uh, Lent and, and Easter and whole time called Trinity and we've had harvest, we've had, um, uh, Oh, we had Pentecost, we had Ascension, we had all of those different times of year as we've been learning about Jesus and who Jesus is and who Jesus calls us to be. And we last week had Christ the King as we focus upon Jesus, who Jesus is, the risen King and the Lord in our lives. And again, we start with the new year, the church's year, the Advent and we will be lighting some Advent, uh, a, an Advent candle um, in our service today. So maybe you've got a, a candle that you'll have with you at home that when we light the candle with the special prayers, you'll be wanting to light that candle as well. So um, if you haven't got a candle and you'd like to go and get one, then, well, you know, you can do. You've only got the notices to miss out on. So, Happy New Year. Would have had poppers, but, you know, um, Ian's, uh, Ian's got all the poppers. Are you letting off a party popper, Ian? I don't know. We'll have to find out. So, the notices. Today we have our Holy Communion service, and, um, and that is uh, followed by Zoom at noon. Now, I'm just making sure that I did, because I don't want you to miss out on any of this. Yes, I'm broadcasting. Zoom at noon, where um, various people from the church who have Zoom facility and want to chat, uh, they uh, ch- um, log in. If you want a Zoom invite, email me on revaustin at sky.com. And make sure that, uh, well, when you do log in, you've got a, a name that we recognise, because if you've got a big long string of letters and numbers and, and symbols that we don't recognise, we think you might be a computer virus. And we've had enough of viruses for this year. I'm sure you're not a virus. Monday to Friday, we have 9.30 in the evening. um, Zoomplin, night prayer. Again, if you want an invitation, um, please do. We had 14 um, during this past week. And that was still with more people who've been in the past. So it's a lovely, lovely service. Do join us, revaustin at sky.com for an invite, 9.30, Monday to Friday, in the evening. Monday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, and Thursday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. This church is open for quiet prayer, so you just come and spend your time here uh, quietly. Um, Some people are using that time to bring Christmas cards that they are going to be putting in the piles for uh, people in our community, um, and also um, uh, bringing donations for the uh, breakfast club. So, yeah, kill two birds with one stone. That sounds a bit cruel, but um, come and pray, but also bring your cards or donations if you wish. If you'd like to bring collection for um, the Church of the Resurrection, um, then um, I will be here and with open hands. (laughs) Wednesday, 12 noon, we have the ladies' Bible study lunch on Zoom. So um, if you'd like a, um, uh, an invite and you qualify in that you're a lady, uh, then please do email me, revaustin at sky.com. I'm thinking of changing my name to that. It'd be easier. Don't forget to write your Christmas cards. Bring to church by the 13th of December. Cards will be delivered during the following week after they've been in... Um, isolation for a time keep collecting your stamps for the bms the baptist mission society and keep collecting your one and two p coins 
uh, as we're continuing to support our chosen charities in all the ways that we can. So the stamps, when you bring them, they have to be cut um, uh, two centimetres away from the actual stamp um, and, and uh, brought in in an envelope. Uh, and uh, yes, let's, uh, most stamps are um, sticky back uh, rather than lickable these days. So thank goodness for that. Well, yesterday was our first messy church takeaway. Where's my tambourine? <laughs> it was wonderful. It was really, really good because uh, we, we had uh, lots of adults and lots of children um, and, and they were all um, doing a, um, uh, an Advent wake-up shake-up. And so uh, if you want to know more about that, sign in for the... Uh, 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 messy church takeaway and the crafts were made so massive thank you to Sally who's and Tom as well who went around delivering all of the craft packs to people yesterday morning it took her a couple of hours to get everything delivered that shows how many people have been interested in those packs so thank you that it all went so well we've got three more weeks um, of that so yeah I'm really looking forward to next Saturday 2 p.m for the Messy Church Zoom and on the Messy Church Grove Hill Facebook page. Sunday the 5th of December. That's next Sunday. Where's it going? We will be allowed to return to our public worship at 11am with all the distancing regulations in place and we will continue to broadcast on Facebook and post onto YouTube. So. Um, if you're staying at home anyway, it won't be any different to you. If you can come back into church, welcome, come back. I promise I won't be singing in person, okay? So <laughs> I'll just have recorded it beforehand, so there's no real escape. Christmas services. Whoa! Um, so Christmas Eve, we will be having a crib service in church and this is a one that's really good for children, but they stay with their families. We will let you know how to be safe. Um, but it'll also be on Facebook as well, just like this. Um, but wrap up warm, because we will go outside for singing at the end of the service. Because you can, if you are a good distance apart and no more than six in your bubble, then we can sing carols outside. And that will be a great... A witness to the community as well so wrap up warm and bring a torch as well and we will have safe carol sheets I've never met her carol sheets um, but I'm sure she's she's around every year <laughs> anyway ah, 11.30 on uh, Christmas Eve in the evening we're going to have our midnight communion in church and on Facebook so if it's too late for you to come out you'll still see it on here um, on this page um, but do come along and um, it, will be, it will be different but it will still be the same. It will be a devotion to God and there will be pre-recorded carols. We won't be singing outside at one o'clock in the morning, I promise you. Christmas morning. Now, it's going to be different. Um, the Catholic congregation are having their service in, in this church part, hopefully if they can get cover um, on Christmas morning. But as it stands at the moment we will be having a virtual Christmas morning service at 9.30. So um, please, uh, that will be on uh, Facebook, but also if we can, we'll have it on Zoom so people can see face-to-face uh, -face, um, who's there. So uh, that would be really good. More details to come for Christmas morning, but nothing physically in church at 9.30 on Christmas Day. So many notices, but let's just spend a moment in quiet as we prepare ourselves today. And so for our opening prayer. Welcome in the name of the Lord. God's grace and mercy and peace be with you. And I know you said, and also with you. <laughs> Prepare the way of the Lord. Make a path for our God in the desert. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. This is the promise of the Lord. God's promises shall be fulfilled. Now, today at the beginning of uh, Advent, we are aware of 
the dark times that we've been through, uh, maybe in our country, in our world, our community, maybe in our own lives. And we're acknowledging those dark times. But Jesus is a light that shines and the darkness will not overcome those times. So I'm going to take my microphone over to uh, the organ and, um, and Jenny will be playing as we sing our first hymn, Great is the Darkness. Otherwise known as Come Lord Jesus. So we have the lighting of our Advent 
candle. And thank you to uh, Joyce, who made this wonderful, uh, as all the years that she has been doing, this wonderful Advent candle wreath. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. We will light a candle to remember the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the ancestors of our faith. A reading from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house the land I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors, to you be praise and glory forever. You called the patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfilment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ, a lamp to our feet and our light to our path. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. So if you have a candle at home, please do join us in lighting the first Advent candle. And we pray together, Lord Jesus, we give thanks for our father Abraham, who by faith obeyed your call and became the father of many nations. Give us faith to listen to your voice, that our hearts may be filled with the hope of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us pray our theme prayer for today. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We know that there are times when we would rather live in darkness, when we'd rather people not see what we do, when we'd rather not, that God wouldn't know how we were behaving. And yet God knows, and yet God still loves us, but we must bring our confession to God. When the Lord comes, he will bring light to the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, 
Forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will. And give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have our first reading brought to us by Steve. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our, unright all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to hide hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Steve. We're going to sing our next hymn, uh, which is uh, written about when we can rejoice when good things happen, but how we respond to God even when bad things happen. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
We now have our second reading, our gospel reading uh, from Steve. The gospel reading is from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. Jesus said, But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds, with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender <coughs> and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Steve. I love the clocks at the end there. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts always be acceptable to you, O Lord, our God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Now, if you saw this week's notice sheet, you will have seen uh, that I asked, are you more like Brussels sprouts or hedgehogs? And if you don't get the notice sheet, then please, and you'd like the notice sheet emailed to you, then uh, let, let us know, let uh, Rita or, or me know, um, and we will get a notice sheet to you. So, fascinating questions like, are you more like a Brussels sprout or a hedgehog? I like to whet people's curiosity. Are you more like a Brussels sprout or a hedgehog? Did you know that Brussels sprouts actually need the first frosts for them to develop in flavour and to be at their best. That's why Brussels sprouts are seasonally best in the winter time. I know people who think that they're not seasonally best any time of year. I like Brussels sprouts. Whereas the winter forces some creatures like hedgehogs into hibernation. Brussels sprouts and hedgehogs respond, respond in different ways to the cold snap. Metaphorically speaking, this year has been one long cold snap, a time of restrictions, a time of fear, a time of loneliness, a time of hardship. How are we responding? Have we wanted to hibernate like a hedgehog, keep ourselves safe until the situation is safer? I know that was me earlier on in the week. That I needed to hear this sermon. Or have we been like a Brussels sprout in the first frost, growing deeper roots, developing flavour, growing to a new potential? You know, it's, it's really hard sometimes to tell if we really are growing. Sometimes it feels the opposite. Some areas of our lives may have been thriving, whereas other areas there may be a debilitating struggle. Our mental and emotional and physical health 
may really have taken a battering and we barely have the energy to even cry out to God in our prayers. Oh. So let the prophet Isaiah cry out on your behalf today, on our behalf. He's talking to God in the aftermath of the Jews' exile to Babylon and life has not yet returned to normal. And you heard in our first reading Isaiah uh, saying to God, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. Isaiah is saying, Oh, God, show yourself in a dramatic way and show our enemies who is the powerful one. I think we can relate to this earnestness of pleading with God. Oh God, that you would just come down. We may not be asking God to, uh, for our human uh, enemies to be smited. But all that is wrong and harming people, we rightly cry out, Oh God, come and help us. We cry out, Oh God, take away this pandemic from us. Help us to come together again. We might also pray for other things to be taken from us or given to us. What is your, oh God, prayer? But are we looking for the answers which make the mountains smoke and tremble? The massive answers. Isaiah says to God, you hid yourself and we sinned. Is it that God hid? Or that what God was doing to help was not what the people were expecting or looking for? Now, for some reason, one of these, there we go, one of the microphones was flashing. Hopefully it wasn't mine. And so, Maybe what God was answering was not what we were expecting. Maybe we were looking for big answers to our prayers. But if God answers in a way that we weren't expecting, then God hasn't answered. Do you know, this morning... This morning I said, hopefully the microphones work properly. Are you still getting me? I hope so. Maybe God's answering in a different way this morning. <laughs> so, I'm sorry about this. If God is answering in a way that we don't expect, do we think that God hasn't answered? Surely the answers seem to, sometimes the answers seem to take us in the wrong direction. In the opposite direction to where we want to go. Sometimes to climb the mountain you need to start off by going down into the valley. There's no other way to actually get to the mountain apart from going to the, through the valley. In order to come together, we actually have to stay apart. The answers are not always the size of a mountain, but tiny changes. If we ever look for the big answers, we may miss the tiny ones. When Jesus spoke about the big changes at the coming of the Son of Man, a time of judgment and huge uncertainty and seeming chaos, sun and moon darkening and stars falling, he also says 
Look for the leaves and the buds on the fig tree. By that you will know that the summer is coming. Leaves and buds, small. The small things can be a sign of things changing. And by the way we respond to them, those changes can be for the good. If we ignore the small buds of change, we will miss out on part of the joy. In mental health, as in other forms of health, it's important to celebrate the small victories. If you only ever celebrate the big victories, you may never get there. The small buds can grow to wonderful fruit. We are beginning the Advent season, preparing to observe the season where we focus on welcoming our Saviour into the world. We know this came through a tiny baby, vulnerable like us. Not the mountain-shaking warrior that we ask to solve all our problems, but a companion to grow and to journey with us. Jesus was born as a life, world-changing answer, but tiny. And yes, that bud of a baby has grown into the king of time and space and the, only, and the one whom, in whom everything holds together. But let's celebrate the small blessing of a baby, the Jesus, as we get ready to receive him. May we celebrate the small buds of hope in our lives and in our world as we wait for God's summer to come. Now finally, we are a people, I think, who know the winter in many ways and respond to it in different ways. Brussels and hedgehogs. Now I'm delighted to share with you a fantastic video of Mel from our church family who has written and recorded a song which celebrates the difference knowing God has made in her life. So let's listen to Mel as she gives thanks to God and celebrates that difference. And I'm going to make sure that the microphone's working over there, because microphone B seems to be flashing at the moment. Hello everyone, this is a song I wrote when I was in hospital. It is dedicated to everyone going through mental health problems. I hope you enjoy it. As I travelled on life's journey, I see life mysteries unveiled. I see the good and the bad, the happy and the sad, all shining through. I need some sunlight in my life. I need some hope and peace in my heart. If only I can believe. Whoa, whoa, making a difference in my life means to know what's inside of me. Making a difference in my life means to know what's inside my soul. Light up my life, light up my soul. My God made a difference to me. Light up my life, light up my soul. Let me help make a difference to you. Light up my life, light up my soul. Your God can make a difference to you. Light up my life, light up my soul. Let's make a difference with you. Light up my life. Light up my soul, let's make a difference with you. Light up my life, light up my soul. 
Please God send us your love to make us all whole. Thank you so much, Mel. That was a very brave song to sing and we really appreciate that um, because it's a, an example to us all to be looking for those small changes that make the massive difference. If you feel that you would like to stand or make a way that... Uh, uh, you are meaning what you are saying. I encourage us to share our affirmation of faith together. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father who created all things. For by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. We now have our prayers led for us by Sheila. to the words, Lord, in our darkness is shine your light. God of love, there is so much scary news in the world today. Wars, disease, political unrest and aggression. We want to hide away and pretend nothing is wrong, but we need to stay awake to what is happening. There are lies. Please let us look for the truth, where there is Predicament, help us to learn about difference. Where there is bitterness, help us to learn forgiveness. Lord, in our darkness, shine your light. God of love, we lift up to you all the illnesses in the world. We pray for all suffering from pain, disease and confusion, and all struggling with their mental health. We pray for their families who carry them in love. We pray for all working within the medical profession. We pray for all who are working on vaccines and for all who are responsible for distri distributing vac vaccinations to all who protect their community. And we pray for all who have concern about receiving the vaccination. Please give us all wisdom. Lord, in our darkness, shine your light. We pray for all who feel distant from loved ones. We pray that they will receive love and safe contact. We pray for all who miss church and feel distant from God. We pray that they will receive hope and comfort. Help us to play our part in reaching out to them. Lord, in, in your, our darkness, shine your light. We pray for all who have moved home or hope to in the near future. We pray for all who find it hard to feel at home, where they are, and for all who need to move their safety in a world which is scary, with change. We thank you, God, that you stay the same and will always love us. We remember all who have died, who are special to us. We thank you for what they taught and showed us. We thank you that they are held within our love. We pray that we will be able to carry on all their good ways in our lives. Lord, in our darkness, shine your light. We thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sheila, so much. And we pray together our prayer for growth. God of all hope, whose touch can bring forth abundance, 
and whose breath can restore life itself. Strengthen and rejuvenate your church so that we grow with a renewed spirit. Let us channel your love into the communities of Grove Hill and Woodall Farm so that your light brightens the darkest of corners, restores faith in all that it touches and leads us forth as a united community to do your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus who gave his life so that we may find our way home. Amen. Even when we come back together next week, we can't share the peace in a physical way, but we are finding new ways of letting people know that they are included in our love. And so we share that peace with one another today. Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. I give you my peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's love and peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. It's also a time when we would normally be taking the collection. And as I've mentioned, if you want to bring uh, donations uh, into church uh, Monday or Thursday, probably Monday would be better because I'm here then, um, then um, we can uh, receive your gifts for church or for Christmas cards or for donations for charities uh, such as the Breakfast Club and the Youth Booth. And we give all of from what God has given us as we pray our offering prayer together. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. 
confident that your promise will be fulfilled. We now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory for ever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as Jesus, our Saviour, taught us, so we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Every time we break this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Draw near with faith, Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. 
eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus, we come to this your table not because we are strong, but because we are weak, not because of any goodness of our own gives us the right to come, but because we need your mercy and your help not because of anything we have achieved, but because you love us and you died for us. Glory be to you, our living Saviour and Lord. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for us all. The blood of Christ. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. For those of us who were not able to receive the bread and the wine, the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when we shall, he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we have our final hymn, um, which um, uh, we couldn't get a, a recording of. Now, hopefully the microphone will have enough uh, ability to, um, uh, to pick up both this speaker, um, this microphone and the, the organ over there. And yeah, well, we will do our best to lead you in this final hymn, which if you remember... It was uh, one of uh, Derek's favourite hymns, Will Your Anchor Hold Through All the Difficulties and Struggles in Life. Rage 
And the wild wind blows, shows the angry waves, then Boko flow. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Will your anchor hold in the floods of death? When the water's cold, chill your last blessed breath. On the rising tide, you can never fail. While your anchor holds, breathe in the veil. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Will your eyes behold through the morning light, the city of gold and the harbour bright? Will your anchors sink by the heavenly shore, when life's storms are past Fasten to the rock which cannot move. Isn't that amazing? With the world as unstable and crazy as it is at the moment, we know that we can put our trust in God and God will be our rock and our faith is the anchor. It's tricky sometimes because sometimes we're more like hedgehogs than Brussels sprouts. But don't forget to look out for the small buds and the leaves of hope and change. Even if the mountains are not quaking with God's presence, the little changes are beginning to happen. So we've come to the end of our service and uh, we have our final blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, Shine upon us, scatter the darkness from before our path and make us ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and all those we love and pray for this day and for evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, it's wonderful for you to be with us. And um, just I'll leave that on the screen there for a moment. Now, at the end of the service, whenever we have children here, they have a special job to do so that others can share in the Advent wreath and we don't run out of candle by Christmas, the children, well, they can't blow the candles at this time, but the children will have the opportunity to use a candle snuffer. And so, um, would you like to snuff the candles? Well, tell you what, I'll do it for you. This candle may be extinguished, but the light of Christ will never be overcome by the darkness. Amen. Maybe see some of you next week in person. Otherwise, we'll see you on Facebook. God bless. <laughs>